Hi, and welcome to another episode of Beer for Breakfast ABV. I am Danielle from The Moke Show on 91X. As always, I've got Paul Segura with me, brewmaster from Carl Strauss. What's up? And today we have BNS with us. We've got Dan, the head brewer, or also old bitch. And we've got Russell, the new bitch, over at BNS, working in the tasting room as well as in the cellar. So welcome, guys. How's it going? Thank you. Thanks for having Good us. Good to have you guys. Yeah. Uh, this is not the first time BNS has come on. Dan, this is your second, second time here. Yeah. So welcome back. Cheers. Cheers. We've just been pre-gaming with yeah. the stout here. Mm -hmm. And before that, an IPA. We've been we we've been pre-funking hard. We uh, started with a revolver IPA, 6.5 ABV, which is a uh, 2015 JBF Gold winner. Yes. Right. For the IPA. For the IPA. Mm -hmm. and Huge then, bragging rights. By yeah. the way. That, that was like massive. 400 yeah. beers yeah. in the category that yeah. year. Amazing. And then this dark one right here, the uh, Gatling Gun Imperial Stout, and the awards on the back of that can just go on and on and yeah, on and on. Yeah, keep lining up. <laughs> they just keep on going. It's a great beer. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys tried laying down this beer? I've been curious about that. I mean, to uh, me, um, it tastes good when it's fresh, and I dig it, and I would quaff the hell out of it. Yeah. But I wondered how it would do quaff after, the hell it, out of after it. about two years. It actually ages very well. It's a 9%, so it's got that aging ability. Um, with all the dark crystal malts, um, just... Just gets more and you more. A lot of raisiny. Yeah, it gets. It just gets rounder, yeah. not as sharp. Yeah. Um, which turns out great. I but gotta yeah. try that. Yeah. I think I'm gonna buy some of that and just lay it down yeah. for a little while. All right. Well, to go in a completely opposite direction. Uh oh. <laughs> a hoppy lager, the Rube. Tell me the story behind this beer. The Rube uh, started out a collaboration for opening day that we did with uh, Dan Drain over at Half Door, mm -hmm. and uh, we were trying to figure out a name for it and. One of our buddies heard this podcast about the Rube, and he's just an old school pitcher, was supposedly better than Cy Young, but because he was, I guess, a raging alcoholic and had this weird thing to chase after fire trucks in the middle of the game. Is he like a dog? <laughs> kind of. That is amazing. <laughs> but, uh, Do you yeah. think he was a fireman? I think he just liked to help out people. So, like, whenever he felt that someone needed help, he would just leave everything and just chase after the fire truck, I guess. I don't know. That it's a awesome. funny story. You guys should look it up. And now he has a beer, and uh, the story is on, on the, the back. back of the yes. beer. Uh, that's or you awesome. can Google the Rube. <laughs> well, cheers, guys. Cheers. I'm, I'm guessing he's passed away at this oh, point. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's long gone. <laughs> <laughs> but chasing fire trucks somewhere. Ooh, In the good. sky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a good beer. So this is a, uh, it's dry hopped with uh, Columbus. Do about six pounds of it. Um, but yeah, it's just a good, clean, crisp lager. It's good and hoppy. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, not bitter, but hoppy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That we, comes from the dry hopping. So. Can we talk about that for a second, the difference between bitter and hoppy? Because I think that a lot of times people don't understand People the confuse difference. the two. People yes. realize, I think, they're tasting hops sometimes, mm -hmm. but they call it bitter when it's not really bitter. Do you have an easy way to differentiate between versa. hoppy and bitter? I think um, that's, wow, how should I put that in sort of layman's terms? You detect bitter. Parts of your tongue detect bitter. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're not tasting that bitter component, don't use the word bitter. Mm -hmm. You're, you know, you're probably, you're yeah, tasting you're like, hops. Yeah. Call it hoppy. I yeah. mean, you know, after a while, I think. Because bitter isn't always like a good, good thing, I think. I think uh, a good, clean, soft mouthfeel is better than a harsh bitter mm -hmm. but, right and i think that's the direction a lot of people are going with the hazy ipas and stuff you know because everything's right. late edition nothing is early edition hopping so right when so. i think hoppy i think like more aromatic yeah i think like what you're getting off of the tongue versus the bitter aromatic like what you're saying and, like what you're aromatic and taste it. instead of just right. a sharp bite on your tongue mm -hmm. yeah so how are things out there in santee i know that you guys celebrate six years this coming summer yeah so how are things out there they're good they're good uh we're just plugging away. We just got a, a in a, what five Bevmos now, so we're shooting to hit all thirty in San Diego. Um, nice. So look for them out there. Very um, cool. Other than that, every Friday, Saturday, bands, food trucks. Awesome. It's going so good. A party out there in Santee. Yeah. Yeah. So for anybody who hasn't gone out there, what is the easiest way to find BNS? Uh, you mean Not how far to get off there? Fifty-two. 
I guess you so can So you can't miss it off the 67. If you're going 67 north, there's a huge BNS sign on our on the left-hand side, or you can just go to the uh, Santee Drive-In. Okay, We're yeah, right next, right right next to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So you can't miss it. And what I like about their, ta their I mean, their tasting room is huge, and it's really fun. I mean, you, and you can buy spirits inside there as well, but you can also, there's a Filippi's Pizza right yeah. across the street, and you can oh. buy pizza and, bring it and in, take yeah. it in. Yeah. But, I mean... That would, I guess, spite the food trucks. The food trucks are legit. They're, yeah. you know, really good oh, food. Oh, food trucks are great now. Yeah. yeah. And you've played there before, right? Uh, Plenty no, of times. Yeah. A few times. Yeah, my so band it, has like, played there. get hopping on a Friday, Saturday night? There's some good bands, man. I mean, yeah. I don't know who's Francie used to book the yeah, bands. Yeah, Francie moved on. Um, She's doing uh, insurance now, but uh, now it's Meg. But yeah, we... We, we have a so lot of good bands. Whoever's doing like, it brings in good yeah. bands. Yeah. Some of the best bands in San Diego play there. Mm -hmm. And it's a big, you know, stage, comfortable yeah. space. And I was telling him we had Ron's Garage. They're great. And they yeah. do a great job. So, yeah. And then we have uh, another band called Ass Pocket Whiskey Fellows. <laughs> There's like 15 yeah! of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. If nothing yeah. else for the name. Yeah. Oh, that is fantastic. So they do all like Irish music, really punk, fast Irish music. So mm -hmm. it's good. Like kind of Dropkick Murphy style. What I really like so. about Ron's Garage is you can shout out anything and those dudes will play oh. it. Like somebody was like joking and they said it. Freebird. Yeah. And they played Freebird, man. Yeah. And they killed the solo. Yeah. And it sounded great. No, they're great. Yeah. Who does I, that? Aren't they a lot of, uh, I think they're a lot of uh, music teachers, right? Or a couple yeah. of them are? Francis Parker. Yeah. Has, yeah. 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 That's awesome. Uh, so when I think of Santee, I think of, you know, just, and I worked out there for about a year. I think of just like, really hard working like blue collar folk yeah and from what i'm getting from your guys's beards is you can cross over very easily you know i would say that this hoppy lager is an easy crossover from you know one of those big light beers yeah like budweiser mm -hmm. yeah. like one of those big companies um are you are you finding a lot of converts in the past almost uh, six years yeah well, i mean we have a, our gunfighter uh golden nail which is which is basically our play off of uh, Budweiser, but using ale yeast. Mm -hmm. But we, I use a Pilsner, 50% Pilsner malt to give it that little like bready, um, lager type character. And that one sells off the, off the hook. Yeah. Like they love it out That's there. That's your best selling beer? That, I, I, in the tasting room, yes. Yeah, easily. For sure. I think I poured more of that than anything yeah. on Saturday night. Because a lot of people come in there and they say, what's your lightest beer? And we just yeah. Automatically give so them the industry, we, we call those like bread and butter beers yeah. sometimes. Or, you know, those are the beers that turn the lights on. Yeah. Um, and that allows you to do other things. Like, yeah, and then you know, hopefully, the hopefully, and like, maybe we'll run out or our bartenders will like, no, you need to try this too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's it's been working out and I think people are, are enjoying craft beer now. Or more. Well, those kind of beers are like a hook, too. They gain, you know, people yeah. gain confidence in you as a brewer. Yeah. I mean, I tell everybody, if you want to measure how good a brewer is, go in and try the lightest beer. Yeah. And if it's clean and consistent and, you know, really well made. Yeah. Because you can't really hide any flaws in the right. light beer. Yeah, so. there's right. not a lot of flavor to hide. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I love just kind of the uh, turn that I think San Diego beer is taking. I'm seeing so many lighter beers coming out. Not, you know, yeah. obviously there is an array of IPAs out there, yeah. but I'm finding a lot more lagers and pilsners. And yeah, more sessionable beers. And right. I think because you can only have so many... Nine percent beers, and then you're right. just you're either toast or <laughs> can't even talk. You know what I mean? So it's exactly. nice to have crushable beers so you can hang out with friends longer. I think absolutely. And people mm -hmm. are finding they like that more. Well, this one right here, um, the old prospect. I love reds, and I find that it is in in my opinion underserved style. I don't find a lot of them, and this one's award winning also, right? So 2016 gold. 2016 gold, and then 2018 uh, gold for at World Beer Cup. Awesome! Well, yeah. cheers to that. Cheers to that. Cheers, cheers to all your successes, yeah. man. You guys have really raked it in, yeah. like in the international competitions. Trying. Beautiful color. Look at that. Yeah. So this is uh, I brew this with uh, Paul's malt. Have you heard of? Um, yeah. Yeah. Your malt, dude, that's uh, red. It's got a great name on it, but it's not actually. <laughs> is that not. your malt? No, not yours. no. Is that your musk? <laughs> no, mm. no. And if it smelled like my musk, it wouldn't win medals. <laughs> yeah. um, well, that's probably a good thing. Yeah. Probably yeah. that it's not um, this Paul's malt. <laughs> this smells really pleasant, actually, like mm -hmm. toffee and caramel. Yeah, it's not, it's not overly hopped. I think a lot of red ales uh, lately have been overly hopped, like dry hopped and... More, more aroma on it. So this is more 
balance between the earthy hop and of the cascade and and the malts so you know what i really want right now and i can be this? totally well yeah but no what but with this I was exposed to my very first nut roll during uh, oh, yeah. Collab of Palooza, <laughs> and this really makes me want a nut roll. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's why they throw them yeah. in there, yeah. too. <laughs> On the bottom of your malt bag. Yes. Yeah. That's what I want right now. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out They're to Jim. So good. Uh, it's, it's cool that you put a food association with beer. That You're you're in that zone now, yeah. like the rest of us. Just where, call me a... Dr. Bill Jr. next. <laughs> I nerd out on that all the time. I drink a beer like this and I'm going, okay, this would go well with like a barbecue burger or ribs mm -hmm. or a pizza with, yeah. you know, a lot of... I think it's pretty universal. It would be good with a lot of things. But mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. Or with the dessert. I mean, you got the toffee and caramel thing. Yeah. So you put that with like a bread pudding. There you amazing. Go. Are yeah. you hungry right now? I am. Now? now I'm thinking about this. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah. It's on the mind. Red pudding. I can see why this beer wins medals, too. I mean, every, you know, your beers are really well made, man. Awesome. And Thank I don't you. know if, you know, you're kind of out there um, sort of on the fringe a little in Santee, and not a lot of people make the trip out there. And I'm really glad that everybody now can place a name yeah. and face you know, with, the, face name, with yeah. the name and know who... Yeah. Dan is, who's <laughs> winning all these medals at BNS, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, you guys are like, I don't want to say flying under the radar, but no, for, 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 as many, yeah. for as many medals as you have won in the past five and a half years, it's just, it's kind of blows my mind that you're not just like well, a household name. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of a little bit my fault. I think we were, we we're pretty much pretty understaffed for a while, so it's just been me doing it. Luckily, we brought Russ on so he can help out, so hopefully... We'll get our name out We're there a little bit more. We're expecting a lot out of you, <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I expect but, a lot out of myself, yeah, too. Yeah, he's going to do great, though. Everybody better know who BNS is by this time next year. If I'll, one I'll see what I can do, all right? right. You know, muscle to love muscle. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, Dan, thank you so much for yeah. taking time. Thank you for having us. hang out with us. Yeah. Russell, new bitch, I hope that it works out really well for I'll, you. I'll do my best. And you're very happy. <laughs> and, uh... Look for these cans. You can find them at Bevmo. You can find them, you know, at your better bottle shops. I'm sure you can get them in the tasting room in Santee yeah, as well. That's the tasting room. We sell them out of there. And then any, most drafts, we're trying to get on as many as we can. So Keep an eye out for Buy the mess. stout and lay it down for two years. Yeah. Yes. That's what I'm going to do. All of it. It's all just, we tried every single beer. I, I would, we have a, a great array, actually. I think that this is a There's great something case for of everybody. what yeah, yeah, definitely. you guys have to offer. So thank you guys so much for making time to come in to uh, do beer for breakfast with us. Paul, thank you. I'll see you Friday morning. Yes, you will. And if you don't know, Paul comes in every Friday morning to tell the Moog Show, as well as you, what you should be drinking this weekend. So tune into that every Friday at 920. And if you want to watch any of the backlogs of videos for beer for breakfast, you can find that at 91 x.com and uh thank you so much and cheers to indie beer cheers cheers, cheers to bns yeah 91x